Question 24 looks a lot like questions 22 and 23, which were whole passage questions that we needed to save until the end to be able to answer effectively. If you skip this one and save it to the end, it's not the end of the world, but I know from experience that this number 24 is not a whole passage question. It is a no line reference question. What's the difference? Well, no line reference questions might not tell me exactly where to look in the passage, but I do know that there is a specific place I can find this answer. It's not something that's general. It's not something that's repeated throughout the entire passage. It's something that's stated in one particular spot. How do I know that this is a no line reference question and not a whole passage question? Honestly, it's just from experience. I've seen so many questions at this point that I kind of have a good sense of what I'm dealing with. But to kind of give you some insight into my thinking, when I look at this, I see that they're asking about something very specific, the striped cucumber beetles. This passage is going to mention them a bunch of times, but it's asking specifically kind of like about them early on. And so my gut would tell me, why don't you read the first paragraph, see if they mention these striped cucumber beetles. It's a very memorable phrase and see if they say anything about them. So that's kind of what I've done here. Um, if I look, I do see that that phrase, striped cucumber beetles, is right there in line 11. Reading around it, um, I can tell that they're bad. So that's something to maybe help me. But why are they talking about these things? Um, they're the bad guys as opposed to the good guys. And what they're really talking about here is these, these, pl these plants and these bees. Texas gourd vines unfur unfurl their large flared blossoms in the dim hours before sunrise. Until they close at noon, their yellow petals and mild squashy aroma attract bees that gather nectar and shuttle pollen from flower to flower. But when you advertise to pollinators, you advertise in an open communication network, says chemical ecologist blah blah blah. You attract not just the good guys, but you also attract the bad guys, which we know are the stripe, stripe, striped cucumber beetles. Whew. So these beetles have something to do with the flower and the bees, and hopefully we can look at the choices and learn a little bit more about what our task is here. They feed primarily on Texas gourd plants. Well, they seem to be involved with these Texas gourd plants, but the word primarily is one of those really strong words that I know is a problem on SAT questions. You have to be really skeptical of this word primarily. Do the, be the beetles feed on the gourd plants? Probably. Do they primarily feed on the gourd plants? I really don't have evidence of that, so that's not a good sign. Maybe it appears somewhere else in the passage, but again, speaking from experience, knowing the SAT, it's unlikely that this choice is right because of that one word. So let's keep looking. They are less attracted to dimethoxybenzene than honeybees are. It's a good example of like the science in these science passages is crazy. Don't try to understand it. Just big picture stuff, not the pronunciation of something like that. And that something is not really mentioned. So it seems to be not related to what we're talking about here. Choice C, they experience only minor negative effects as a result of carrying bacterial wilt disease. Um, well, they do talk about this bacterial wilt disease here, and they do suggest that the beetles transmit it um, by defecating. Ugh. Um, and it does hurt the plants. It doesn't say anything about it hurting the beetles, though. This is one that might be true, but it also has this strong word only. That's a word I know to be nervous of for the same reason as the word primarily. It's a very strong word on the SAT. Um, and just because it doesn't say it hurts the beetles doesn't mean it doesn't hurt the beetles. Like, it, it might hurt them. I really don't know. And so I'll... Choice C would be kind of leaping to a conclusion that I have no evidence of. I might need to do that, but let's look at choice D. They are attracted to the same compound in Texas gourd scent that squash bees are. Well, they're talking about the, um, the aroma. Here it is in line four um, that they use to attract the bees, but that you also are communicating with everybody and you attract not just the good guys, but also the bad guys. So 
This paragraph seems to be about how this plant gets the bees and the beetles. And that seems to match with choice D here, that whatever the compound is, again, I don't really care, maybe it's this dimethoxybenzene thing, but I don't really care. Whatever the compound is, it's attracting bees and beetles, good guys and bad guys. That's as good of a match as I need. Again, if you had skipped this passage or this question, or maybe you just weren't sure about this answer, you could always come back and see if other line references, other parts of this passage support this conclusion. Honestly, though, I feel pretty good about picking it right now, mostly because I am pretty certain how strong words interact with answer choices on the SAT, and there are some big red flags in these other choices. So strong words a lot of times can help you pick the right answer just by eliminating some of the bad ones.